hello and welcome to this affinity photo tutorial now this sort of all came about from a f in the Facebook group quite a while ago somebody asked about adding a gradient to a layer mask now I am fairly certain is that can be done um, I'm sure I've seen it in a video somewhere but I believe that once you do add a gradient to the actual mask itself you sort of no real way of editing it later on without sort of mucking things up. So I thought it, I personally believe it is much better to do it this way, sort of working in tandem with the gradient and the mask. Now, I have done a written tutorial about this, and it is in my series, which I call Short But Sweet. And basically, in those Short But Sweet tutorials, I'm sort of aiming more at the more advanced user so I don't give too much description I don't tell people where the tools are and what to do and how to use them I'm assuming the people know these things at the outset so I thought I'd make this video more for the beginner and hopefully I can sort of ease you along and explain where things are and how I personally would do this I'm not saying it's the best way to do this but it's the way I believe works best. So, like I said, we're going to try and make the roof of this house with a gradient, so it's sort of darker at the top, lighter at the bottom, to give it a much more, less flat it look like this image, which, by the way, I got from pixabay.com, and I will add a link to this in the description um, for this video, as well as a link to the written tutorial if you're that interested about that um, it's not at the moment it's not up um, the written tutorial but once I finished it and then it finished you know all the editing and what have you that will go up first and then this will go up second so you have your base image be it a house or whatever so the first thing I would suggest you do is to duplicate that image it is a good practice to get into um, that way you protect your original so if you make any alterations that can not be re um, sort of got back you're not ruining your original so I mean this particular tutorial doesn't really damage the bottom original layer but it is a good practice to get into so First thing we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this original layer. You can do this a number of ways. You can use keyboard shortcuts on the PC. It's uh, Control and J, and on a Mac it's Command and J. You can also do it from the Layers menu. Come down to Duplicate, or you can right-click on the layer and come down to Duplicate. So your original is now safe and protected in fact you can even turn it off now so you know that you're not going to damage your original in fact what I'll do is I'll rename this just so we know that that is the copy and not the original so we have the house layer and what we're going to do now is we're going to add a new layer and most people will say you, know, you, know, you can add a new layer, a new pixel layer by clicking on this icon down here and then adding a gradient to it. Any trouble with that is you cannot come back and edit that gradient later on. Um, you'd have to redraw the gradient every time. The best way to do that is to add a new fill layer. Now if you come up to the layers menu and one of the options is new fill layer now I personally have made a keyboard shortcut for myself um, I don't believe it comes with a shortcut automatically for this option so if it's something gradients are something you could use quite a lot I would advise you know making a shortcut for this option but if not just come down to from the layer menu down to new fill layer now, 
if your default colours were the right way round, be it you know, black to white, you would start with a filled white layer and the option will be solid up here in type and as you can see from the cursor it's already set with the gradient tool although the gradient tool is over here and technically it's not selected it is selected on a new fill layer automatically as you can see from the um, cursor just below it and to the right you've got the gradient icon which is that black circle with a line going through it so like I said it's set on solid at the moment I'm going to change this to linear and this will change it to a gradient which is going white to grey and at the moment it, the, it's sort of stuck the nodes in the top corner so the whole thing is grey so I'm going to do a rough sort of line where I believe the roof is it's sort of going to go from up here roughly to roughly down here so what I'm going to do is when I'm going to come to about here where I believe the top of the house is and it, we're going to come back and alter it later anyway so it doesn't really matter too much but I'm going to hold down the left mouse button and then I'm going to hold down the shift key and this will draw a straight line and come down to roughly where I believe the bottom of the house might be about there let's say and at the moment it's going white to grey and as soon as the top of the house I want darker not lighter this is the wrong way round at the moment so one of the options here is to click on this button to reverse gradient so this will put the darker grey at the top and the lighter white at the bottom so what I'm going to do now is change the blend mode of this fill layer at the moment it's on normal and I'm going to change this to overlay and as you can see you can you can still alter this however you want and I mean obviously at the moment it's a bit too bright at the bottom but this is where the sort of layer mask will come in to its own so I'm going to leave that where it is like I said we'll come back and alter this later or what I will do is I will change the color of this top node to black now you can click on the node to make that the active node and you've got the color option here and you can double click on that and then pick black and close that so like I said we're, now I've got that bit set up I will leave it roughly as it is which is pretty terrible and we will c turn that layer off and come back to that later and I will click on the house layer then you can see the gradient icon has gone let me come off that tool by clicking on the hand so next thing I want to do now is select the roof now you can use whichever selection tool you like whether it's the pen tool um, or the magic wand tool whatever it's called I can't remember what it's called now but I'm going to use the selection brush tool mainly because it's quickest and I'm only doing a fairly bog standard selection let me just increase the size of that and we just click and drag a little bit and it will make a selection and as this is set on to add it will just get each selections you make it will add that to the selected area now unlike that one I just click there and it's now selected that whole background so I'll just press Control and Z to go back to where I was I'm going to reduce the size of this selection brush and just select the house again 
Now see this is selected a bit more of the background there, so I'm going to change this to subtract and just remove that bit it has gone over the top and selected an area I didn't want selected and then go back to add I see it's done that again it obviously thinks that this roof area is it's all part of the same color scheme as the background so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to subtract and just subtract all that background area in fact what I'm going to do is I'll come back and refine that in a minute I'm going to pause it this video while I make selections but what I'm going to say is don't forget to get the sort of the little bits of roof here they're just sort of under the eaves and what have you so I'm gonna pause the video or the recording of this video while I go off and make a better selection of this roof okay I've finished making a selection of the roof areas including all the little bits under the sort of eaves and what have you now I am freely admit I've not done a pixel perfect selection um, if you're doing your own image you'll make a better job of it I'm just because this is only for demonstration purposes I've not sort of really gone over the board and made everything perfect but we have our selection so as you can tell you had the selection because you got this sort of they're sort of commonly known as marching ants these little black and white dots and we're going to keep those active but we are now going to change layers and go back to this fill layer that we made earlier and select that and then turn back on its visibility now what we're going to do now is we're now going to make a layer mask but the layer mask will only be added or will only affect the areas that are selected in this case the roof now to add the layer mask you just need to click on this icon down here that looks like the Japanese flag and you just click on that and it will add a mask to that gradient so that gradient is now only affecting the areas within the selected area uh, you know the selection we made anything outside the background and the foreground and the main front of the house is no longer being affected by that gradient the gradient is now only working within that selected area now we can now turn off this selection and to do that I think there's an option up here in the select menu where you can deselect or you can press control plus D or command plus D so you just click on that and that selection area will now disappear so if we now because that mask is a child of the fill layer it will only affect the fill layer and not anything else so if I now select the fill layer and I come back to the gradient tool click on that our gradient has now returned which is not something you could do if the gradient was added to the mask or if it had been added to a normal pixel layer you can only really do this if it's added to a fill layer so you can now alter this to suit the actual image better and let me bring this bit further down so it's not affecting the white it's not affecting making this too bright you can also lower the opacity of that so it's not too dark you can also 
in the, you can hardly see it but there's a little blue line in the center of this and you can click and drag on that and alter how the gradient whether it's a lot of white at the bottom or a lot of black so I'm going to leave it about there so let me just come off that tool so you can't see it anymore so that would basically have fulfilled what the, the person wanted where they wanted to add a gradient to the roof of his house making it darker at the top and lighter down the bottom so it doesn't look such a flat image so that could be pretty much where you could end this but this is where doing it this way has its extra advantages in that you can sort of use this mask again for some other um, alterations that you might make if I just shut that down a sec, uh, close that group so let's say for example you, you want to make another alteration and I'm going to come to the adjustments here and I'm going to select levels alright so if I want to so I want to darken this foreground area because at the moment it's a bit bright but I just want to sort of darken it slightly so I'm just moving the gamma slightly but as you can see wherever I move this it is affecting the whole image you know the roof as well as the background as well as the foreground this is because it is above this layer is above everything else and will affect everything below it and because this mask is a child of this fill layer it only affects that fill layer because this is this adjustment is a layer of its own it affects everything below it so what we need is a mask for this layer well we do already have a mask so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the mask layer and right click and duplicate it and then I'm going to click that copy with the left mouse button, hold down the left mouse button and drag this up and make it a child of this adjustment I've just made and you can hopefully you can see there's a sort of blue line that comes from the right but it doesn't go quite the way all the way over to the left which when it's like that it means it will be made a child of that layer above so when I release the left mouse button that mask will be added to this levels adjustment now the thing here is this mask affects only the roof area but I want to affect the area outside of that roof area so this is sort of like the clever part of this is if I invert this mask so all the areas that are white will become black and the areas that are black will become white so if I come up to the layer menu and invert or you can do control plus I or command plus I that mask will change so it only will now affect the background area and the foreground area but will not affect the house because the mask is now protecting the roof I should say not the house it's only protecting the roof so if I bring if I double click on this to bring back the levels adjustment if I make alterations now with this adjustment as you can see it is only affecting all the areas except the roof it's having no effect on the roof whatsoever because then that mask is now protecting the roof whereas this mask here is protecting everything um, that isn't the roof this mask is affecting is protecting the roof hope that made sense because it is an, a, a sort of 
negative copy of the original mask I made. So now I can just make alterations to this if I feel that it needs it. Yeah, I think I just need to alter the gamma. Let me close that. Yeah, so hopefully you now think that that is a better looking image because I've got the sort of gradient with the mask protecting the roof area and then I've got the levels adjustment with the mask protecting sort of the other areas so if I turn that off and I can turn that one off as you can see that was the original and then with those back on so as you can see I think it's better to work with a gradient on a fill layer and then add the mask to get the effect that you want just in the areas that you want and like I said before you can always come back to the fill layer highlight it select the gradient tool and your gradient will always come back so you can always tinker with the gradient at any point which I believe you can't do once you've made it on the actual mask itself I could be wrong there but I can't see a way around where if you've added it to the gradient uh, to the mask sorry that you can go back and re-edit it I'm quite prepared for someone to make a comment saying oh yes you can do it but I, I don't think you can I think this would be the best way to uh, add a gradient to a certain area by adding the mask to a fill layer and then you can always come back and edit it at your leisure at a later date so I believe that is everything covered so thank you for watching and goodbye